your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Hey, they're rolling up the gangplank. Watch. Oh, Dave, you didn't see the most beautiful ship? Mm -hmm. Proud, majestic queen of the sea. So big and so enormous. I don't see how she stays afloat. Oh, it's easy as a matchstick. Amazing the things they do today. Now, close your mouth and open your eyes, darling. See if you can see Hartley and Julia anyplace. I don't see one face I know anywhere. I hope we don't miss them. I don't see how we can. They have to come down the gangplank, don't they? Well, not if there's a more distinguished and aristocratic way of doing it. <laughs> Julia would prefer it. Now, that's a fine way to talk about your only brother's wife, a stranger. You'd think you didn't like Julia. Well, you don't happen to be a stranger. Well, if I were, I certainly get the wrong idea. I don't know why you don't like to admit you like Julia. Oh, I admit it. Julia's got an excellent head on her shoulders. She knows more about stock markets than any broker on Wall Street. Well, that's not saying so much, I but she's smart and fundamentally, she's got a very good heart. She's much nicer than you make her sound. I like Julia. Well, good, good. I just happen to prefer my women dumb, stubborn, and cute. I, I can't help it. Oh, thank you so much, sir. <laughs> and you are cute, you know it. Your hat falling down over oh, one eye. Well, you can skip the compliments. Lend me your handkerchief. Haven't you ever got one? It is not large enough. For what? For waving. Oh. Anything else you'd like to know for the mere loan of a mere handkerchief? Yes, who are you going to wave at? Who do you think? Who'd I come all the way down from Connecticut to meet at this boat? But you just said you couldn't see Hartley and Julia. I'm going to wave a handkerchief on general principles. General who? What if they can see me if I'm not waving? They'll be very offended. Uh, here you are, darling. Now, here. Wave till your heart's content, but don't tire yourself. Oh, this is so exciting. I'm so glad we came. Beautiful, romantic sound. Someday we'll have to travel there. Where is there? All the places that sound makes me think of, of course. Oh, of course. Well, a gangplank's in place. You ought to be coming down at any time now. Much as you pretend. You're excited, too. You are, admit it. Who's pretending? I didn't realize I'd miss Julia and Hartley till this minute. Well, then you won't miss them for long. <laughs> David, I don't know why, but now I feel like crying. Look at all the people coming home. Look at their faces. No, I'm not so sure. After all, I would like to go away. Well, you can't come home if you haven't left it. Oh, that's where you're wrong. I come home every evening when I see you again, darling. All right. Hold on to my hand tight. I, I don't want to lose you in this crowd. You won't lose me ever. Did you see him, David? No. No, not yet. Other people are seeing other people they know. You think Julia will be surprised to see him? I think so, and please, too. But we won't hang around. Julia isn't going to have much time to spend with us once she's off the boat. Why not? Oh, she'll have to check her baggage through the customs inspector. What for? So he can see what foreign goods she's bought and is bringing into the country. Oh, what difference does that make to him? Oh, a lot of difference. There's a duty to pay on everything you bring into the country over $100. Honestly, the government sticks its nose into everything these days, doesn't it? <laughs> That's what it's for. It's a lot of nonsense as far as I can see. Who'd want to bring in a lot of stuff? Not me. I hate packing. <laughs> you hate spending money, too, so we'd be safe. The trouble with most laws is you can tell they've been made by men. Men don't do the packing, so they suspect all sorts of things. I'll bet you, I'll bet you Julia hasn't got a thing to declare to the customs inspector. All right, I'll bet you on that. If it were me, I'd try and get away with everything. You wouldn't dare. Oh, yes, I would. <laughs> Just don't you ever try it, you hear? David, there they are now. Where, where? Look, see, right, right, right there on the deck. See on the right oh, there, yeah, just yeah. getting on the gang Yeah, I see them. I, I don't think they see us. Oh! He looks as if he's gained some weight. Or is it his sunburn? Both, I think. David, shout. Maybe they'll hear him. I will not shout. Then I'll shout. You will not. This is the sort of place where it's perfectly permissible to raise one's voice. yoo Julia! Hartley! I'm embarrassed to be seen with oh, you. come on, Stuffy. Shout a little bit. Do you good. Julia, hello! Julia, what a surprise. You look wonderful. Even Julia shouted. How nice of you to come down. Oh, that's Hartley! Yeah, here, hang on to my coat, darling. I'll, I'll push through this mob. Aren't you glad we came down to the boat? Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I always intended to. Wouldn't be half as much fun without me, would it, David? Uh, sorry, not half. Claudia, oh, good to see you. Oh, you look wonderful. So well, so rest. I'm exhausted. It's been so hectic. Hello, Julia. And David. 
You were angels to come all the way down here just to meet us. We got your cable this morning. We just couldn't resist. You've been gone so long. Months, months, months. Where, where's Hartley? He's disappeared. Oh, he's gone with the porter to set up the luggage. Oh. Those dreadful customs inspectors are going to start rummaging through my things. Well, I wouldn't let them if I were me. I mean, if you were me. I mean, if you... I Why don't were... you go around again? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's one of the necessary evils of coming home. Well, I think you're being very nice about it. Personally, I hate people going through my things. Especially a strange man. I think uh, Claudia is a born smuggler. And Hartley thinks I am. <laughs> you men just don't understand us. Oh, David, you look fine, too. Oh, there's Hartley now. Hartley, hello! Claudia! Hartley! David! <laughs> Why, you're even nicer to see than the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> hello, Hartley. We certainly missed you. Have a good trip. You're looking fine. Fine, both of you. Being farmers agrees with you. You look as if your gallbladder hadn't bothered you at all. <laughs> Let's not discuss that. Now, you stay right here on the pier with us. We'll not be very long, and then we'll all go back to the house and have a long talk. Here, uh, Claudia, sit down. You can sit down on my trunk. Oh, I'm fine standing, Julia. Yes, but you'll get tired, Don't dear. bother telling her anything. It's a lost cause. Let her alone, both of you. Claudia looks as if she knows how to take perfect care of herself. Oh, Hartley, I've really missed you. You know, you're the only man I know who acts as if women had brains. That's because Hartley is married to Junior. He shouldn't draw a conclusion. Ouch, ouch, my ankle. Oh, did I kick you, darling? Have you flagged the customs inspector, Hartley? Yes, it'll be long, my dear. And I do wish you'd amend your declaration. I've declared plenty. What's the declaration? I told you, it's the form you fill out telling what you're bringing back that you bought abroad. Oh. Well, if you do that, why do you have to... Look through your bags, too. Because some women don't declare everything. <clears throat> they think it's daring and clever to try and get away with a few things, no matter how little it amounts to. Oh, I'm sure I'd try and get away with everything. Over my dead body. David, don't talk like that. Well, Hartley, what if they did find something in your trunk that you haven't declared? You pay a tax on it, that's all. Oh, taxes, taxes, taxes. That's all people seem to be able to do with their money these days. <laughs> I can't see that a few dollars more tax would make any difference to our government. What's the use, Hartley? They won't understand. I think they understand, but they won't admit it. Admit what? I don't know one woman who is gracefully submissive in the face of laws and regulations. They just won't admit to a higher force. I feel the same way about parking tickets, don't you, Julia? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I give up. When you've been married as long as I have, David, you'll learn that there's just a few things that make a woman feel superior. One of them is being illegal. <laughs> Such wisdom. <laughs> Oh, look, Hartley, there's old Mrs. Espenshad waving to me. I think I'd better go over and say goodbye. The pleasure is all yours, my dear. <clears throat> I'll only be a moment. If the uh, customs inspector comes, call me. Say, right. what time is it, Hartley? Just one o'clock. I'd better call my office and tell him I won't be back until after lunch. Uh, Claudia, yeah? you stay where you are. We'll be right back. I won't move. I'll guard these trunks of my life. <laughs> Norton. You Mrs. Norton? Yes, yes, I'm Mrs. Norton. And the customs inspector, 43. Oh, well, how do you do? How do you do? All these trunks and valises, it says here, uh, eight pieces. Oh, yes, all these here. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Declaration here is very full. Trunks open? Well, yes, they are, I think. Fine, fine. I will start on this one here. You mean you rumple through them? Sure do, ma'am. How else am I going to know what's in them? Going through other people's things. Aren't you ashamed? Look, ma'am, this is my job. The government pays me to rumple through. Well, at least you can be more careful. Honestly, don't you take anybody's word for anything? No, ma'am. Oh. Particularly the ladies? And you and my husband. You know, with the ladies, it's a game. They try to put it over on me. <laughs> Makes them feel good. So instead of asking, I just rummage. If you ask me... <laughs> I'd tell you the truth. Oh, yeah, sure, sure you would, yeah. That's the trouble with you. You think everybody is dishonest. Not dishonest, just sporting. Now, if I were to ask you, is there anything in these here trunks that ain't on this declaration, what would you say? I'd say yes. Loads of things. Huh? Oh, perfumes and dresses and heaven knows what. What? <laughs> well, after all, what does one go to Paris for but to buy things? Well, now, look, you don't have to tell me that. <laughs> go on, look through these trunks. But I can save you an awful lot of time. In the shoe bag, for instance, that's a, that's a wonderful place to hide perfumes. Now, look, madam, and look. And you can pack one dress inside another without any trouble at all. Look here. Whose leg do you think you're pulling? Nobody. Oh, no, 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 look, ma'am. Nobody, nobody in the history of this service here has ever seen anybody come out and confess things like that. 
I don't believe a word you're saying. Oh, you poor man. You've been disillusioned. Ah, uh, the fact you're telling me all these things, I know you ain't hiding nothing. And look here. To show you I'm a man of faith, I'll stamp your declaration and check you through. Oh, that's sweet of you. <laughs> you see, before my wife had a baby, for a while she couldn't tell a lie either. She so, couldn't? Nah. Here you are. Well, thank you. You're all checked through satisfactory. Well, I knew the government wasn't as nosy as some people say it is. And I, I'm awfully glad to see that somebody respects another person's word. Well, goodbye, ma'am. It sure is a pleasure doing business with you. I, I'll send around a porter. Goodbye. And thank you so much. Sailing, sailing over the bounding main. Everything all right, la, 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 la. Everything fine, David. Trunks have all been inspected. Everything. So quickly? And he didn't look at a thing. I tried to tease him by saying these trunks were full of smuggled things, but he didn't believe me. <laughs> he said I had an honest face, and that's all. You see, it's very simple. What did you say these trunks were full of? Oh, perfume and shoe bags, dresses inside of dresses. <laughs> I made it up as I went along. <laughs> Brilliant. You belong in jail. David, what is the matter with you? Making it up as you went along. You know perfectly well that that's where Julia put those three bottles of perfume. What? Certainly. That's what Hartley just told me. Then I... I then I've cheated the government. I've committed a crime. I don't know why you sound so surprised. You behave perfectly according to your sex. But that's all. That's the trouble with being a woman. Even when she smuggles, not on purpose. It's held against me. Not on purpose? Oh. David, I wish we never come down to the boat to meet Julia and Hart. Now, Julia be delighted it turned out. But don't way. you understand? Now I'll never be able to believe myself again. Because for once, I thought I was honest. Now, I ask you, can a woman make folks feel comfortable if she's all tired out from fussing over elaborate refreshments? When people come over of an afternoon or evening to visit, to play bridge, or listen to phonograph records, all you really have to do is to bring out ice-cold Coca-Cola. You'll find that everybody enjoys the pause that refreshes. And what's even more important, you enjoy it too. Now, what could be simpler? Bottle and opener are all you need. Then you can visit refreshed. Oh, Mr. King, I understand that my bags have been checked through and that they're perfectly all right. Yes, Claudia had the customs inspector so befuddled he hardly looked through them. <laughs> From now on, I'll trust Claudia with all my peccadillas. Ah, uh, but only trust her when she doesn't know she's being trusted. I hope she's not going to worry about it. The whole difference is only about a dollar. Well, I don't think she'll worry about it for long. You know how it is, Mr. King. Sometimes getting away with something, no matter how little it is, well, makes you feel a little... Well... You know. Yes, I know. My wife is exactly the same, Mrs. Norton, so I understand. Good. By the way, Mr. King, I have a surprise for Claudia. A surprise? Now that I've told you that much, I won't tell you any more. You'll have to wait to find out what it is tomorrow. Oh, I won't sleep a wink tonight, Mrs. Norton, but, but I'll be here tomorrow to find out what it is. And as I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.